Today I would like to talk about the coding cancer immunometabolism. Uh, I would like to concentrate on the role of cytochrome C. And I would like to tell about effect of COVID-19 mRNA vaccine on respiratory system by Raman spectroscopy and Raman. We know that cancer is one of the most common and serious diseases in Europe and in world population, and one of the main causes of morbidity and mortality, much higher than the other diseases. Our laboratory, a laboratory of laser molecular spectroscopy, consists of laboratory of Raman spectroscopy, laboratory of Raman imaging, laboratory of femtosecond spectroscopy and laboratory of infrared imaging. We have also atomic pulse microscopy and the bio laboratory to grow uh, cell lines and real time in vivo neurosurgical Raman system uh, to guide to guide in vivo brain optical biopsy to visualize cancer in real time as doctors operate. We study human normal and cancerous breast tissue, brain, neck and head and intestine tissues. And we study human cell lines, human lung normal and cancer epithelial cells, breast normal and cancerous epithelial cells, um, brain glial cells, like astrocytes, also astrocytoma, glioblastoma, and medulloblastoma, in vivo animal models, and drugs, Temodal, Erlontinib, uh, Trastazumab, mRNA vaccine, Amantadine, and photosynthetizers in cancer therapy. With this equipment, we are able to provide information on structural, metabolic, epigenetic, immunologic, and genetic information. Briefly, our innovations are related to Raman biomarkers, Raman optical biopsy, virtual Raman histopathology, and real-time in vivo neurosurgical Raman methods. With linear and nonlinear optics in our cancer research. The first term in polarization is related to spontaneous Raman microscopy we used, the second term to the second harmony generation, and the third term to stimulated Raman scattering and pump probe transient absorption in femtosecond spectroscopy. Uh, in our fourth laboratory, laboratory of femtosecond spectroscopy using nonlinear optics, the system, femtosecond system, consists of femtosecond laser uh, emitting the pulses of 100 femtoseconds. The laser is pumped by the green line of the diode laser. Uh, the single pulse from this laser goes to the regenerative amplifier where it is amplified. Of course, the regenerative amplifier is also pumped by another laser. Here we have this regenerative amplifier. The output from this um, amplifier is uh, 4 uh, watts. It means that the energy of the single pulse is uh, for uh, microjoules, and then the output is split into two beams, uh, and go. They, this, the, the pulses go to the optical parametric devices. Uh, here we have many nonlinear crystals, where different kind of um, nonlinear effects are produced, including uh, second harmonic generation third harmonic generation, fourth harmonic generation, signal idler, sum, summation pulses and difference pulses. Uh, so this system separately provides the energy from two uh, nanometers 
uh, up to um, 10 microjoules. So we have the full range from uh, ultraviolet up to uh, infrared. And here the pulses uh, are split into two beams, a pump and prop. Uh, two beams goes to the sample. The sample is here. This is the flowing sample with using the flowing system. And then the excitation, the effect of that goes to the spectrometer and to different kind of detectors depending on the excitation beams. As we know, the light activated mechanism uh, of proton gradient uh, occurs in bacterial rhodopsin, for example, and this is the first mechanism of product, uh, producing the proton gradient. And the second mechanism is uh, due to electron transport chain for, that forms the proton gradient across the uh, inner mitochondrial membrane, which drives the synthesis of ATP by, via chemiosmosis. And here we have the cytochrome, which plays the key role uh, in transfer of the electrons between the complex three and complex four. Um, we would like to show this double phase of cytochrome C in cancers. As we know, cytochrome C belongs to the family of heme-containing metalloproteins. Cytochrome C is synthesized from two inactive precursor molecules, epocytochrome C, and that is a protein that is encoded by nuclear gene and imported into mitochondria, and heme, which is synthesized in mitochondria, and cytochrome C is located in the intermembrane space of mitochondria and is released into blood stream during pathology. Cytochrome C is a key protein that is needed to maintain life, respiration, and cell death, apoptosis. And cytochrome is present in life and death decisions right from the beginning, even before the life started. Here we can see the spermatoid and this green color here and this green spectra correspond to cytochrome C. We studied cytochrome activity in animal brain here we have the characteristic bands, vibrational bands of cytochrome. Uh, in the view of the results for animal brain, it would be extremely valuable to control cytochrome activity in humans. To help answer these challenges, we studied Raman enhancement of cytochromes for ex vivo human brain and breast tissue of highly aggressive cancers like medulloblastoma or glioblastoma. Uh, we used three excitation waves to examine uh, the selectivity of vibrational modes of different symmetry. We used 785 nanometers uh, without resonance and uh, 532 nanometers for the resonance with Q band and uh, 355 nanometers for the resonance with retinoids. One can see strong dependence of the signal, Raman signal on the excitation wavelength. It means that we observe so-called resonance Raman spectrum. A resonance with the solid band or with the Q-band. We use this Q-band for further analysis. And we found that the Raman bands of the reduced form of the cytochrome have much higher intensities. So we are able to distinguish between 
cytochrom oxidized cytochrome and reduced cytochrome. To check whether the reduced state of cytochrome C is related to the cancer aggressiveness, we use the Raman redox state biomarker represented by the Raman intensity of 1584 centimeters to minus one. Uh, and here we have the human brain and human breast. Uh, this is the uh, tissue. And one can see this characteristic band of cytochrome that increases uh, with uh, cancer aggressiveness. G0 means uh, healthy, uh, normal uh, tissue. G1, G2, G3, 4. This is the grade of the aggressiveness. The higher the number, the higher aggressiveness according to the WHO organization classification. And here we have the dependence of the Raman signal versus cancer aggressiveness. One can see that the signal increases with cancer aggressiveness. And the same for human brain. And one can see that for the human brain, the Raman intensity of the cytochrome first increases. And um, for the most aggressive grade, 4 decreases. Uh, the level of the cytochrome B does not change with the cancer aggressiveness. Until now, uh, no technology has proven effective for detecting cytochrome C concentration in specific cell organelles. Therefore, the existing analytical, analytical technologies like ELISA, Western blood, or liquid chromatography or flow cytometry um, cannot detect the full extent of cytochrome um, concentration inside and outside specific organelles. So they cannot provide direct evidence about the role of cytochrome C in apoptosis and oxidative phosphorylation because they are not, not able to uh, monitor the amount of cytochrome in specific organelles such as mitochondria, cytoplasm, or extracellular matrix. And Raman imaging can do that. Raman imaging uh, can be used to uh, analyze the biolocalization in different uh, organelles without breaking the cell, without releasing the biological material to study the biochemical composition. To check if vibrations of cytochrome C can be used also for pathology assessment in living cells, we analyzed Raman spectra of brain and breast cancer cells lines uh, in, at in, in vivo incubation. And one can see that for the cell lines, we can see the characteristic band of cytochrome C. Uh, the concentration of cytochrome C is different in different organelles. And the highest level is in mitochondria and in liquid droplets. Now, uh, let's look on the role of cytochrome C in human breast ducts with Raman imaging. Here we have the schematic representation of the structure of human normal duct. One can see that this is the milk duct, or duct which is empty uh, for uh, normal ducts of healthy patients. Around, we can see the tightly packed epithelial cells. And around, we have the extracellular matrix consisting of uh, fibroblasts, of adipocytes, of uh, connective tissue. And here we have the results. The normal duct is on the left. One can see uh, that uh, the signal is very low. And for cancerous human duct, we can see the signal, which is much higher for um, the cancer aggressiveness uh, G3. And here, the same one can see 
that the signal increases with the statistical significance. And now let's look at the distribution of different components. On the left, we have the normal human duct, and on the right, we have the cancerous duct. Um, let's look on uh, different components, oligacid and uh, their derivatives. Um, in the normal duct, oleic components are uh, present inside the epithelial cells, in contrast to the cancerous cells. Um, cytochrome C in the normal cell duct, uh, cytochrome C is located in the extracellular matrix. In contrast, in the cancerous cells, it is uh, located in the extracellular matrix, in the epithelial cells, and in the lumen. So we observe the release to the lumen. Uh, similar palmitic acid, again, concentrated in the epithelial cells and released into the lumen. Cardiolipin, very important lipid, uh, concentrated here in the epithelial cells, but uh, in the cancerous cells it is observed everywhere in the lumen, in the epithelial cells, and in the extracellular matrix. Let's look uh, that the interaction between cytochrome C and cardiolipin, which is very important, is completely different for normal ducts and for ca the cancerous duct. In normal duct, the localization of cytochrome C and cardiolipin is different. So the, it is impossible that they interact efficiently. Uh, in contrast, uh, here for the cancerous duct, cytochrome C and cardiolipin um, is located in the same areas, so they can uh, interact effectively. So in breast cancer duct, uh, cytochrome, cardiolipin, and palmitic acids are the main component inside the lumen on cancerous duct. In contrast, the lumen in normal duct is empty and free of cytochrome C. So let's summar summarize. On the left, we have the normal duct with low concentration of cytochrome C, which is in the oxidized form. Cytochrome C is unbound to cardiolipin. We observe effective uh, apoptosis, low at the low level, physiological level, and effective respiration. In contrast, for cancerous human duct, we have high concentration uh, of cytochrome C in the reduced form. Uh, cytochrome C is bound to cardiolipin. We have reduced apoptosis and reduced uh, respiration. Uh, a few words about the interaction between cytochrome and cardiolipin. Cytochrome C is mostly protonated. Meaning, uh, meaning that most cytochrome C bounds via electrostatic bonds to acidic uh, phospholipids, particularly cardiolipin. And cardiolipin-bound cytochrome probably does not um, take part in electron shuttling of the respiratory chain. It indicates that the process of oxidative phosphorylation becomes less effective in cancer cells. On the other hand, the reduced form of cytochrome C cannot induce caspase active processes of apoptosis. Uh, and uh, apoptosis in cancerous cells becomes less effective. Uh, let's look at a very important effect of extracellular matrix. To answer this issue, we compare the correlation between the concentration of cytochrome C versus cancer aggressiveness for human tissues and in vitro cell cultures. For the tissue, we observe the following trend. For uh, the cell lines for single cells, the trend is opposite. Uh, uh, here we have the signal, Raman signal, and here cancer aggressiveness. So uh, with cancer aggressiveness, the signal increases in the tissue, while for the single cells, decreases. 
this is very important finding showing uh, very important cell physiological responses because normally the cytochrome C operates at low basal level in normal cells but it is strongly induced to very high levels in pathological cancer states by certain cellular stresses the most obvious of which is um, reactive oxygen species or certain nutrients deficiency. We think that this nutrient deficiency is very important and we ask what intracellular reductants are not present in in vitro cultures and the answer is retinoic acid um, to provide the evidence we incubated cells in vitro with retinoic acid um, and let's look on the results here we have nucleus and this is the control without uh, retinoic acid and one can see once again that we increase strongly the signal for cytoplasm again uh, control and increased signal and at 1582 nanometers for lipid droplets control and significant increase of the signal and mitochondria again uh, increase so incubation in vitro with retinoic acid increases the amount of reduced cytochrome C so we were very interested in retinoic acid why incubation with retinoic acid increases the amount of reduced cytochrome and we found that the retinoic acid is a very important player in immunity and um, retinoic acid triggers a signaling abortive anti sars cov defense in human lung cells so retinoic acid is a very essential molecule in the innate immune system because it does not stimulate ATP production and there is a lack of cytokine production. We use the femtosecond pump probe transient absorption methods to study the dynamics of different kind of retinoids of the ground state bleaching of retinoids we found the lifetimes and the, the mechanism of dissipation of the energy but now we concentrate on cytochrome c uh, versus immune system as we said cytochrome c is universally expressed in relatively large amounts in all cells and as such may play the role of the universal damp molecule damp means damage associated molecular pattern molecule which is able of alarming the immune system for danger in any type of cell or tissue in addition we said that cytochrome c is restricted within the mitochondria and there is evidence that cytochrome c when is a inappropriately located may behave as a damp molecule alarming and electing an inflammatory response in the immune system that is why we studied the effect of covid19 mrna vaccine on respiratory system uh, here uh, we want to stress that pandemic has witnessed an explosion in the research examining the interplay between the immune response and the intracellular metabolic pathways that mediate it research in the field of immunometabolism has revealed that similar mechanism mechanism, mechanism regulate the host response to infection autoimmunity and cancer the new tools by Raman Imaging will present in this lecture raise exciting possibilities for new ways to understand pathways of our immune responses, recognize metabolites that regulate these pathways and suggested how we might use them to optimize 
vaccinations to stimulate the conditions of adaptive immune system. And here we have the Raman images of human lung cancer cells. We have the microscopy image and the Raman image and images of single organelles, nucleus, lipid droplets, and rough uh, 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 reticulum, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, cytoplasm, and the membrane, and the corresponding spectra. And we found that for the characteristic band of cytochrome at 1,500 84 centimeters to minus one, we observe decrease of the signal with respect to the control. Here we have the, this dark blue. This is the control without any vaccination, and vaccination leads to the decrease of the signal. In contrast, the band characteristic for lipids shows the increase of the de novo uh, lipid synthesis. And the MI1 here does not change. Uh, now the effect of uh, COVID-19 mRNA vaccine on cytoplasm. And here one can see the cytochrome C. We can see the lack of release to cytoplasm. And here we have again the in enhanced the novel lipid synthesis. And in lipid droplets, again, this characteristic band of the cytochrome C decreases in comparison with the control. It simply means uh, that the uh, effective uh, uh, oxidative phosphorylation respiration decreases upon mRNA vaccine uh, while the, the and we observe the enhanced de novo lipid synthesis. And here we have the summarization of all effects in different organelles. And the conclusions are the following. We use Raman spectroscopy to, mon to monitor changes in the redox state of the mitochondrial cytochromes in ex vivo human brain and breast tissues and in vitro human brain cells of normal astrocyte, astrocytoma, glioblastoma, meduloblastoma, and human breast cells of normal, slightly malignant, highly, highly malignant aggressive cells, and lung cancer cells upon incubation with uh, mRNA vaccine. We showed that Raman imaging provides additional insight into the biology of gliomas, breast ductal invasive cancer and lung cancer, which can be used for non-invasive grading, diagnosis, delineation of tumor extent, planning surgery, and post-treatment monitoring. Our finding in the field of cancer cell metabolism suggests that changes in the cell redox status of uh, cytochrome C is an important cancer driver controlling various aspects of malignant progression. The uh, biochemical results obtained by Raman imaging showed that Raman tissue demonstrate the redox imbalance by upregulation of cytochrome C in cancers. Both breast and brain tumor demonstrate enhanced lipogenesis de novo compared, compared to normal cells. And the results demonstrate the critical role of the extracellular matrix in mechanism of oxidative phosphorylation and apoptosis. We showed that the concentration of the reduced cytochrome monitored by the banded 1,584 centimeters is lower in cancer single cells when the effective uh, the effect of microenvironment is eliminated. In contrast, the redox balance um, show reverted trend in breast cancer and brain tumor tissues when there, is, there are interaction with the environment. And in this case, the concentration of reduced cytochrome monitored by this band is significantly higher in cancer tissue when compared with the tissue.
Thank you very much.